Hey, yeah, it's your favorite history po- favorite podcast that is now a history podcast. You're doing a non-history episode. Yeah, we're back from the annals of history. Except this isn't a somewhat accurate history. This is a noise. Boys. Boys. Oh, it feels good, Alex. It feels strong. It feels like I'm... <coughs> feels like a... <coughs> Got a little coof. Oh, little... <laughs> <laughs> delicious. All right, Alex. What, what, when was the last time we did a Noise Boys? It was was it pre-COVID? No. No, we did. We did. We definitely did a Noise Boys this year, like a little while ago. But because totally pre-COVID forgot. would mean like 2014, right? That's how long you've been in lockdown. <laughs> I remember the days before we were locked down. Okay, Grandma, time for bed. I... I like how 2020 felt like like a fucking full ass like decade. One goddamn year dragged on so hard. Uh, my friend had a really nice take that he probably stole from someone on Twitter, where he said 2020 is the year that everyone pretended 2016 was. Was 2016 when we had a bunch of celebrities die? Uh, yes, but it's also when Trump got elected. That's when everyone got really pissed off and were rioting about it for like five whole minutes. We had riots, but they were a lot longer this time. Because <laughs> no one had, you didn't have a job to get. Listen, you can go out and you can smash windows and topple whatever, be an anarchist. But you got to go to work tomorrow. You ever see that video of like the, it's like a like an old 90s video where he's like, this is enough. I have had enough. Oops, my anarchy symbol. <laughs> that's what it's like <laughs> listen buddy i will topple this establishment but i gotta fucking wake up for work at seven tomorrow so can we hurry this up so uh, yeah covid had so many people unemployed and just bored and locked in they got really pissed off and they had a lot of free time will, to go okay. in and uh mention how pissed off they were i will say this alex I was wrong about covid being a nothing burger I th- but <laughs> But luckily, there's angry people online that say it's overblown and fake. So I can <clears throat> move in that goalpost to say the same thing. So I'm not wrong, Alex. Yeah, so COVID fucked everyone up really hard. But don't worry, Tad, the vaccine's coming out and it takes two dosages. Otherwise, the virus will get stronger. So we're all going to die next year. <laughs> we're fucked. We're, it's over. We are done. stronger? I haven't heard this. Well, no, that, 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 I just that's heard that how, if you take the vaccine, it makes your dick fly off. That, that's how uh, two dosage vaccines work. That's not, that's not like a COVID thing. That just happens with diseases in general. You give it a little vaccine, and it gets weakened, and then you get one more dose of it, and it kills it off. How many people do you think are going to get the one, feel better, and not go back in, thus empowering the virus? Probably the same amount of people who get a flu shot every year, who don't come back for the second. Like, I mean, listen, Alex, We're do you really die. want the Bill Gates microchips turning out, activating the sissy hypno part of your brain? When you drive past the 5G tower and become your sissy hypno transformation, when you drive past the 5G tower and nothing goes wrong? <laughs> I <laughs> I hate this country. It took me a little bit to get that joke. I hate this country so much, Dad. I hate this country so fucking much. 2020 has made me just wish my dad didn't fucking come here. I wish he put his <laughs> sperm somewhere in Denmark where he where it fucking belonged. God, I don't like living here this year. I hate it so much. I already hated all of humanity because I push fucking carts. And every goddamn <laughs> retail worker, especially ones who push carts, hate all humanity. After all, it's why cart darks exists. But now that I see these people, like, okay, okay. I'm going to talk about like, a, like an anime villain again. When I see these absolute mongrels fail to do simple tasks or solve simple fucking puzzles, I just get a little angry. So when I see these motherfuckers throw a fit, uh, little hissy fits, and this has happened at my store too, about not wearing a mask because they feel fine, you know, fuck everyone else. I just get a little angry. I just realize, oh yeah, we're all going to die. We're all going to die because Jerry over here was slightly inconvenienced. It is, uh, it's really cool. Didn't you, uh, did you say some boomer was, like, cheering you on? Yeah, okay. Or something? So, a little story. During summer, now, I've got, I got one of those copper-infused fucking masks you see at the store. Uh, it's loose as fuck, and it falls off all the fucking time. So, at one point, it just falls off my face while I'm pushing carts, and I need both hands, so I'm just, I'm just gonna pull it back up later. Like, I'll pull it back up when I go fucking inside, who cares? But for the whole, like, 30 seconds that it was off, some boomer in a truck with a bunch of uh, Trump flags uh, hang up in the back of it, 
uh, it goes, like ru- drives by me and she, with a thumbs thumbs out, cheering me on, saying, "Yeah, woo, no mask, let's go!" and drives off. <laughs> And I, I don't know, Alex. He seems kind of red pilled and base. The worst part about that truck is that not only is he a freaking customer, it's it's very obvious to see that fucking car. There are two of them. I thought it was the same <laughs> truck every time. There are two of those trucks that drive by and, and shop at our fucking store. I saw them both the one fucking time. Now listen, there's a there's a guy who has a big old RV in my area, and he coated it, coated it in uh, pro Trump shit. Like with like he like shrinky dinked the whole thing, but it's like skewed in spots. But it's got like a website address that I can't make out. But it's got like thirteen like Trump giving a thumbs up collages with like make America great again. Uh, when I was driving out in the mid, uh, so I live in the middle of fucking nowhere, right? But I was driving out in the middle of fucking nowhere in this real tiny town, and uh, I was driving past the house and I stopped to look at it. I stopped to look at it because there was seven Trump flags outside and the lady comes out of the house. I thought, oh, God, here we go. And she offers to sell the Trump flags for ten dollars a piece. That's kind of pricey for a fucking piece of cloth. There was like, make America great again. Keep America great Keep again. America great. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. But it's censored. And then Trump trained 2020 and then one that had him like photoshopped onto Rambo with like an AK-47 shooting into the jungle of commies. <laughs> so I did it. I bu- I bought that one, Alex. Ted, <laughs> I'll don't fully admit I did buy the Trump. Ted, no, fucking Rambo. Ted, no, you're gonna get us canceled. You it can- is so tone deaf to what this fucking old fat billion. I don't know if he's a billionaire, old fat rich ass man who doesn't give a shit about you, but he's Rambo. He's killing those Democrats, those pinkos. Oh, fuck. I tried to give. Uh, I, I bought two, right? I bought that one and I bought like a normal one because I was going to give it to my mom so I wouldn't have to buy a Christmas present. <laughs> and uh, they didn't want it. So I was just I'm just stuck with a Trump flag, a Trump 2020 flag when he lost the election. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it, Alex. I guess I can't throw it away because what if someone digs through my garbage and finds it and then they fucking firebomb my house? I don't know what to do with it. Oh, I almost forgot this one fun story about this whole bullshit. So, you know, 2020 was an election year. A massive disease hit, a massive virus hit at the worst fucking time it could possibly hit this fucking country. I don't know, Alex. I think the Democrats had a play in it. I'm just saying. So, 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 so. I remember Every other on, country in the world was playing along to make sure that my orange daddy lost. So, fucking early on, in like, early, like late spring, early summer, I specifically remember uh, they were telling me this, like, when I walked into the fucking work, like, yo, Alex, you gotta watch out for this fucking guy who's been coming around the store lately. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Because yeah, I, just, I just walked in. Like, there's some, <laughs> they call him the fondler. There, there's some guy coming in here, waving an American flag around, fucking filming people and making a scene. If he shows up, you gotta kick him out. I'm like, man, why does all the fun shit happen when I'm not fucking at work? God damn it, I missed this. I'm surprised it was not, your response was not, why am I supposed to kick him out? That's not my job. I mean, I'd still do it. Uh, fun fact, some guy tried to steal him from the store and, uh, spoiler, I should not have done this. Uh, I, I held my foot out and tripped the guy. Uh... <laughs> oh, Alex, no. <laughs> so they, they caught him, uh, and he got arrested for it. Uh, technically, I'm not supposed to do that, but, you know, no one, no, no, one, no one's going to say anything about it. You didn't mean to trip. You were pretending to trip him. Yeah, I, I was just walking by. I didn't mean to have my leg out there. I just always walk in through that way. Don't worry about it. He should have been walking through <laughs> Alex, the entrance side. I'm sure Thomas R. Walmart, owner and proprietor of Walmart, will be very happy for you. Oh, uh, sh- should I just <laughs> let Associates it- <laughs> may take one banana. Thank you for your work during these troubling times. <laughs> hey, hey, are you going to just let a thief walk by, Dad? you going to sit there and say, well, not my fucking problem are you just gonna be <laughs> you're right uncle ben taught me better than that ted ted are you gonna not put your card away just because you don't feel like it <laughs> like listen he's being an asshole i know i'm just goofing on you anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. spoilers don't do that you get in trouble for it did they give you a medal of honor did you get the purple heart no they, they just said i won't get in trouble for it because spoilers you're not supposed to get involved what was he stealing uh he stole a box of something. I actually thought it was a box of, uh, 
That's what it was. It was a bunch of toilet paper during the whole toilet paper fiasco. Oh, Jesus Christ. He tried stealing it. And he was, he was like, wrestling with the, the fucking ape, with members of AP. Like, he was causing a fit. See, okay. Now, the toilet paper shit, from what I understand now, I am definitely an economics scientist. I'm like a money scientist. Uh, so, this is a concept called FOMO. Do you know what FOMO is, Alex? Fear of missing out. Oh, yeah, he does. Well, I mean, he does work at Walmart. He's a star employee. Of course he would know. I I, I was uh, employee of the month. Fun fact, everybody. <laughs> I, I got Ouija of the month. I got it in November of 2019. I was on the wall, and I'm not making that up. There's a, there's a picture. Well, it's, it's down now because it's been a whole year. But uh, there's Aww. a, a, a picture. Oh. I was really hoping they'd SpongeBob it where they just have a wall of Alex's. No, no, it's, it's, it's just for the current year. So like once it was like summer of 2019, they, 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 they took him down to put the, the uh, next year's up. But yeah, I got to be up I, there for a while. <laughs> Listen, I've never been employee of the month, so I think it's fucking dumb and cringe, okay? Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, toilet paper. Toilet paper, yeah. <laughs> FOMO. You're talking about FOMO. Yeah, so here's what I didn't understand. So I think people were just doing it because they were scared that they are going to miss out. But it's like, how do you think humans pooped before, like, toilet paper, you know? <laughs> it's... It took a little bit, but it did eventually get to guns and ammunition. We're now getting a like getting ammo is really, really fucking expensive now because people realize that's more. If, listen, Alex, you can buy as much toilet paper as you want, but I can get all of that toilet paper for a single bullet. <laughs> like it's the it's the ultimate equalizer. You've got the Hollywood fat cats with their big twirly mustaches and their fucking Game of Thrones armchair of like. I don't, I don't know, what's the highest quality toilet paper? $100 bills, I guess? <laughs> They're on their throne of those toilet paper that has money printed on it. And then you're down there and you just got a gun. You got your Smith and, you got your Smith and Wesson. <laughs> anyway, I was going somewhere with that story. Oh, yeah, you could just do, you could do it like the Indian people do. And you just fucking, you, just, you do the three S's, Alex. This is what I do every morning. I shit, I shower, and I shave. That's it. Like, you know, when you like take a bit like a real this is really good, good podcast material when you take a real bad dookie and you just go, oh, I'm just going to throw in the towel. I'm not even going to bother with this. And you just get in the shower. <laughs> Am I wrong, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I understand about it. It's like you can like you have running water. This is 2020. Why is toilet paper such a big fucking deal Ted, for you? Ted, you do know the average human being consumes one toilet paper roll per day. Uh, like eating? <laughs> I remember, I remember the toilet paper fucking fiasco of fucking, our fucking, our fucking stores were empty. It's, it's, you're sitting out there. Everyone's in like their fucking Lord of the Rings cardboard <laughs> armor. <laughs> They're doing the fucking Aragorn speech before they open the doors to the fucking uh, the fucking horde of monsters coming in there to wipe their shitty asses with a Charmin. Like, dude, dude, our entire telegraph section was tapped out. We live in fucking <laughs> boony ass Idaho and it was tapped out over here. Fuck you. You've got your Walmart leaders surrounding the tower going do 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 one two three Walmart one two three Walmart. I have never in my life had to do one of those chants, but I also have always worked weird schedules. Fun fact: Did you know though that I have not been in a single meeting in the past two and a half years? Are you supposed to have meetings at Walmart? Uh, you're supposed to be told things. Uh, like, fun fact, we uh, we got employee discounts around Black Friday. Uh, they didn't tell me until, like, two days before it expired because just nobody told me or anyone who worked outside because they don't bring us in for meetings. <laughs> That's what it was like when I was the uh, the maintenance man at the gas station. I would uh, just not get told about things. Like, I didn't know that I had a lunch break. I didn't even know that I had fucking vacation time until the third year I worked there. I thought I was like, oh, why did my, I must have got a Christmas bonus because it was like, I got two paychecks basically because I got paid every other week. And I was like, oh, wowie zowie. And then my boss told me, he's like, yeah, dude, you had, you had 14 days of like paid vacation you didn't use. I was like, what? <laughs> All the fucking homestuck I could have been reading with that time. Because this is back when you oh still liked homestuck. Yeah, that would have been 20, 2012 to 2016. That would have been prime Homestuck hours. I remember uh, I remember being at work 
and like the update would drop and I would just go hide in the maintenance shed and read it on my phone. I... Anyway, COVID was like fucking sweet at the start. Remember that, Alex? <laughs> okay, let me... Back at the start of the year? At the start of the year, uh, let me tell you about the paradise that was Walmart during COVID, during lockdown. Nobody's showing up. We were trying to uh, control the flow of customers, so we locked like one half of the like the, the, one of the doors, the the GM side. So we had only customers flowing in and out of one side. So I had to only take care of one side, and there was only like a tenth of the normal shoppers. And we closed at eight thirty, and, and I didn't leave until ten or eleven at night. So I just get to fucking do nothing. It was so fucking nice. God damn, it was fucking paradise. And then people started what? ignoring everything again, and they got worse for yeah. me. <laughs> It started slightly inconveniencing me because it lasted longer than three days. So I just went in anyway. A fucking God. So many times at the start of uh, of uh, lockdown, I would like pull over somewhere. I'd be like, you know, stop the traffic. I would look over and I would see someone get out of their car. Happy as can be, you know, walking over to Wendy's. Stop. Like completely go still, then turn back around to go to get their mask while walking, looking all defeated. <laughs> At least that guy went. Back it was to go great. Get, at least that guy went back to go get his fucking mask. We have a bunch of people who fucking argue with the goddamn greeter about masks or whatnot at our store like once a fucking week. Always. Oh some, my god, some that's old, right. Some they boomer. would fucking. They would fucking argue with the old people. That sucks. I didn't even think about that because I'm like a normal person. Where like if I'm going to it, it's like wearing a mask while going to these places is like going to a restaurant and complaining about having to leave a tip. Like, yes, it sucks that you have to leave tips, but the whole kind of industry is based on that. And if you're going out to get food and you're not leaving a tip, you chose to go out and get food. You chose to go out to go to Walmart. So if you're going to go there, you should you got to follow their fucking policies. That's like showing up there with your in a fucking banana hammock and being like, what do you mean? No shirt, no shoes, no service. Like you chose to leave your house and do this. If you don't want to wear a mask, why don't you use the app? Where you can get the the bullshit and they'll pack it for you. I don't know. I'm, I'm my tolerance for boomers. Like mo half of the truck drivers I dealt with at my first job were boomers, right? Yes. The other half were either women or like dudes my age. They're like twenty year olds and shit, right? But ah, God, at the start of COVID. So um, for those who remember, I worked at a pharmacy at the start of the year. I worked there for about a year and a half. And I didn't realize it until after he sold the pharmacy. I fucking hated it there. Like, I didn't realize because I would wake up and I'd be like, oh, I don't have to go into work today. And I thought it was just, oh, I don't have to go into work. And then I realized genuinely I was happier for like the past two weeks than I had been for a year and a half working at the fucking pharmacy. <laughs> when I went to Walgreens, I don't know, it was like a month ago. I was looking for cough medicine. I went back near the pharmacy area and the noises from there. Now, listen, Alex, I am not like an anxious person. So I didn't know what was happening. I asked my roommate. He's like, that sounds like a panic attack. Like you were having an anxiety attack. The sounds like triggered it. And I started like my heart started going really fast. And I was like, I couldn't catch my breath. And I started sweating. I didn't realize how much I really disliked it. Now, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from my boss there to sound like a real like a fucking boomer. You know, I learned hard work and responsibility. But fuck, dude, we did, we did so many fucking pa uh, so many podcasts when it first ended because I did nothing. I was like, oh, I have nothing until God, I was unemployed from March until Jesus, uh, August. So I had five solid months. And what was nice about uh, about when I actually decided to go back to work the only reason I did was because I finally found a job that paid well and wasn't like there was a few jobs before that I could have applied to or could have got hired at because they responded to me like there was like a, I could work at a grocery store or I could have worked at like a restaurant because I actually enjoyed working at Cracker Barrel as a dishwasher. It was like surprisingly comfy, hmm. but I was like, wait a second, I can schmooze now. So I like, you know, made myself, see, you know, big and important. And this is some advice to all you people who realize that your tax returns are going to be fucking like negative when it hits next year because you haven't worked all year. You got to fluff up your resume. 
you gotta you gotta talk about how you manage a digital enterprise across multiple platforms and coordinate <laughs> with teammate you gotta you gotta fucking you gotta fluff that up People are looking for that, Alex. This is this is your this is a tad business corner. I'm pointing a pen at you right now. I'm like Wolf Blitzer, okay? Manage your money. Okay. Anyway, Alex, you want to talk about video games? I guess. Oh, uh, actually, I have one last COVID thing before we move on. One, one last thing. So you might remember for Ivan the Terrible episode, I was uh, doing a test to make sure I didn't have COVID because I, I was slightly sick and I was a little panicky. This was early on. I was I was a little worried, but I was fine. Uh, so then. Later, after you went to the pool when you were visiting, after you left, I actually got oh, yeah. really yeah. fucking sick. <laughs> I felt awful. Like, it hit me. Like, the minute you, like, left, you're, like, back in Illinois, I'm just like, well, time to get up and get a drink. Oh! And I just started, like, Alex, to die. Alex, right? remember, I have special magnetic powers. I was keeping the COVID away from you. <laughs> fucking, as soon as you left, I started feeling horribly <laughs> ill. And I, I made I, I made the worst choice. I'm going to completely admit it, guys. I was a bad person. This was so risky. But I'm like, I feel really bad. But that COVID test cost 200 fucking dollars. I don't feel like doing that again. I'm just going to go to work and pray I don't die and kill anybody. And so I went to work for three days. Walmart while being didn't sick. pay for it? Uh, no. What the fuck? So how are they supposed to? St- I guess I guess this was really well, early on. This was, yeah, this is before we had our own test. This was like January. Yeah, yeah, this is before we had our own tests in the back. You know, so like by by the time that summer hit and I was sick, I could have gotten one of our free ones in the back. But the thing is, is that I was just off for like two weeks while you were over, and I didn't want to take off work again and you and use up more fucking paid time off. So I'm like. Okay, listen, I'm just gonna fucking go and just hope I don't kill anybody. I'm just gonna pray that I'm... No, I don't want to spend $200. <laughs> listen, I don't give a shit about killing somebody. I didn't spend $200. All of your lives, if I inflict 2,000 people, your lives are worth less than 10 cents to me. I Like, listen, guys... Yeah, that's a slight inconvenience. I'm going to admit it. I was one of those people. That, that $200 <laughs> slightly inconvenienced me. So I just went to work while being really fucking sick. And I'm just like... <laughs> and I just I just avoided people and just didn't die. And they're like, hey, Alex, you're right. like, oh, yeah, 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 all right. I was just... I made it. I was, it, it sucked. It hurt. But nobody died. And I got better after like two days. So I was... I did not have... I, had, I figured I didn't have COVID because I wasn't coofing, you know? But, uh, you know, either way, it was still a very bad idea to go to somewhere sick during a fucking pandemic. It could have it could have well, exposed. Listen, me. Alex, we did a lot of bad decisions. It was what, J- June, July, and we fucking went to a water park. Like, whatever. Well, fuck I it. got sick from it. So, yeah, there you go. Anyway, so <laughs> Get uh, fucked, dude. So, yeah, yeah. So, again, I will admit it. I risked everyone's life at a fucking busy business for like multiple days <laughs> in a row because I didn't want to spend two hundred dollars. Okay, Ooh, speaking of $200, this is the last COVID thing before we talk about video games. So, I don't remember how I found this, but Alex, you know what a wrinkle picker is? No, I do not. Wait, hold on. It's a shoe, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. Do you know what it is about the shoe? No, I just know that's an Animal Crossing. That's why I know what it is. It can pick your wrinkles. No, so what it is is... uh. This is something that came up because... I think I was looking up COVID stuff, like plague stuff. So, after... The Black Plague, you lost, like, think of four people. Only three of them are alive. Like, you lost a fourth of the population of Europe. Like, that's a big fucking number. It was like 25 million or something. Europe wasn't as, you know, populous as it is now. But fashion got weird because I guess people were using it like retail therapy. Because you, like, were missing a person in your life that's just gone now. Like, usually multiple. Because you know, like, you know... I, I forget the number. I think the number of people that you know is, like, 36 or something. Is, like, the limit of people you can really know or something. But you're missing a bunch of those. So they're like, I'm gonna spend money on something. Because spending money makes you feel good. So they started coming up with more and more weird fashion. So there were these big fucking shoes that were really, really pointy. And that's what a wrinkle picker is, is that it's, it's fucking really long medieval shoes that they would stuff with moss or like feathers or cotton or like wool to keep them pointy. Because you're so rich, you can wear these shoes that are incredibly impractical to do any kind of work in. And apparently 
it got it was such a problem people were making them get so long that they had to ban the length of your shoe being more than two inches from your feet because people were like walking down the street tripping people with them and shit hey. like you, they couldn't walk through the, the castle or what i don't know i don't know if there's castles in the plagues whatever walking through like businesses you had to like go sideways because your shoes are too fucking long <laughs> <laughs> also i found out that they were a little bit too sexy because they would show off your ankles <laughs> anyway after world war ii they kind of came back in the form of like wrinkle picker shoes where they were like really really pointy shoes that went out like an inch and a half away from your toe but they were like like dress shoes they're like smooth and black leather and they kind of look cool like i get it like honestly i kind of get it you can't play kickball with them. You'll fucking puncture it. But like, I would wear wrinkle pickers. <laughs> anyway, that's all I had about COVID, Alex. You want to talk about video games? Uh, well, well, there was f- like seven video games that came out this year, and that's it. Not a lot happened this year that was really good. In fact, I've noticed that I didn't play a lot of like new games this year. Like, like, like what, what did I fucking play? I played fucking Fall Guys, a game that lived and died within like a three-month span. Uh... I played fucking Hades, which was which was admittedly a really good game, but that game also technically came out earlier. It just finished in 2020, so that one's actually kind of cheating to say that. Uh, there was a fucking free game that was an hour long called Helltaker that was pretty fun, I guess. That was kind of adorable, but it's not really much of a game, you know? It's just a little shit post. Uh, there's Ghost Runner. That game's actually pretty damn good. And uh, yeah, it's, all, it's, all, it's only new things I've played this entire <laughs> year. A lot of games that are all uh, under $30. The only games that I really played this year, there was only, I I was going to say two, but I guess three big name games I played. I played Cyberpunk 2077. I played Half-Life Alex, and I played Origami King. I talked about Origami King back in like July. I think it was either just before I went over to Idaho or just when I came back. I don't remember, but uh Oh, and I guess I guess RuneScape. I got 99 farming in RuneScape, boys. I did it. It's not it new, only took though. Me, it took me like a year and a half. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. You know, I worked very hard for this. I uh, My friend gave me 30 million gold, and I just paid my way to get it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I did work very hard for this. Um, also, Hive Swap Act 2 did come out. It did come out. I did not play it because I was not interested. I did look up and see what it was, though. So <clears throat> what it is, uh, the big gimmick to Hive Swap Act 2 is that it's the final one. They're never going to make Act 3, but that's kind of obvious, right, Alex? I mean, I'd hope they, I would like to hope they wouldn't make Part 3 yet, even if they could. Um, the big thing was that uh, you're in like a train and it's like segregated by blood color. OK, that's that's kind of cool, whatever. And then more than half of the game is a Phoenix Wright trial. When I first heard that, I'm like, oh, OK, OK, that's kind of interesting because, oh, you know, Phoenix Wright, that's kind of fun. But I'm like, OK, it's Phoenix Wright. But like the, the, the troll justice system is an established thing in the comic that works in a really weird way where you basically just have to make the judge who's a clown like he has to think you're funnier. So you have to make the crime funnier than whatever the punishment should be. <laughs> so if the punishment's going to be funny, the crime has to somehow be funnier. But they didn't do that. You know what your favorite case in Phoenix Wright is? Uh, it's always the first case in the game, right? The one that takes fucking forever where they do all the tutorials and nothing interesting happens. That's your favorite case, right? <laughs> so that's all that was. It's it's just it's it's a straightforward Phoenix Wright case and it's just a disappointment. Speaking of disappointments, uh, Andrew Hussey has a new product or a new project, and I, I'm not interested in it. What's going to make me want to read it, though, Alex, is I'm going to look at the people when it comes out. It's like a visual novel. If Homestuck fans thinks it, they think it's good, not interested at all. If they think it sucks, I'm definitely going to read it. You'll never be you'll never be free, will you, Tad? You'll never stop, will you? You'll always be following the hus around. There was a Homestuck 2 that I stopped after the first update where I went, oh, no, thank you. So, I mean, I've been free of the Huss since the epilogues came out. Yeah, but you, he you, has you... taken up no free any time he has been in my mind. He's had to pay for it. OK, Dad, rent free. Not in my mind. 
You are just like a wild player. God, this expansion sucked. World of the Draenor sucked and this game finally died. I'm never playing this again. Ooh, the new Legion's out. I'm gonna play that. Oh, this is pretty all right. See, but consider oh, this, this, Alex. Shit. I'm never playing this again. Ooh, BFA is out. Yeah, I think I'll play this. But consider this, Alex. I had a free copy of Hive Swap Act 2. I gave that Steam key away to someone else and then, re then re like, just closed my... Uh, my fucking humble bundle for like the window. So I couldn't even download the game for free if I wanted to. That's why we fucking played strong bad's cool game for attractive people instead. Which is a fun stream, by the way. Uh, speaking of disappointments, uh, a video game came out that was uh, really cool that I was really, really looking forward to that ended up sucking. Oh no, that's cyberpunk. I didn't play that game. That fuck that. I'm talking about Hyrule Warriors <laughs> 2, Age of Calamity. Man, okay, listen, listen, listen. I'm not gonna go too far into like a huge review of like a, a fucking Dynasty Warriors game, but I really, 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 really liked Hyrule Warriors 1. I played the shit out of that. I have like 200 hours in that. I only have seven in Age of Calamity. Age of Calamity fucking sucks, bro. It disappointed me so hard. Now, I know you're, you're gonna have this exact same feeling, but I'm gonna describe it. When you're excited to do just an X thing, right? You're just, you're excited for this, whatever it is. You get it, and as you're playing it, you have a smile, but deep down, it's slowly fading. You know this isn't what you wanted. This is not what you, <laughs> it's, it's burning away. You're, you're hoping that's going to get better. It never does. Wake the fuck up, samurai. Let me explain how this went down. I know it doesn't, I'm explaining fucking cyberpunk. I swear to God, I'm not, I've not played cyberpunk. <laughs> Okay, like, like I'm, I'm not even doing this as, as like a bit. I, I just legitimately did not like Age of Calamity. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just get this out of the way. Just on, on the ground. It runs at like 20 FPS. That is in it fucking excusable. And it still gets chunkier on levels like the Zora's Domain, where it goes into full-on uh, slideshow mode. That is inexcusable in fucking the modern era. We are past the N64. We should not be like the N64 anymore. This game shouldn't have a heart attack for me using my regular ass attacks on some lizards in a rainstorm. All right, so it runs like shit, and that is a constant issue. So that's just right there, and that, that's the free space. Two, they streamlined everything so hard to the point that it's almost boring. What do you mean? So the Warriors game, it's like, okay, so they all have, they're all like really similar with like one or two different gimmicks. The basic that you'll see in like all of them is like, you're there in like the middle of the battlefield and you have to go like to this base, capture this fort and do site objectives. And so like, I captured this base and now like, uh-oh, X amount of enemies are running over to capture this other fort over here. Hurry, asshole, you gotta go save them and do that. Or like enemies will spawn that are doing like throwing catapults at you. And then like elites are spawning and there are secret goodies to find and extra keeps. Like the battlefield is like, like, multiple tinier objectives are happening while your main objective is to still beat, like, the boss and, like, the boss keep over here at, like, the bottom right of the map, right? As you're going, you could just run through and just beat the level in, like, ten minutes, but you have all those extra things fluctuating that keep your attention and kind of draw it out and keep you engaged, right? Higher Warriors 2, nothing. You just, you, it's, it's super linear. It's like, you capture the one fort, then the, and everything's closed off. You capture the one fort that's open, capture the next fort that's open, capture the next fort that's open. All right, level's done. Over. It was, it was eight hmm. minutes long. Uh, so, and it's like, now, I thought this was just the intro. So I kept going. I'm like, okay, this is gonna get better. This is gonna get better. This is just a slow intro. Slow intros happen. Finally get to a level where it's like a big, wide map. It looks like, a, it looks like a classic map. And I even typed it to you. I'm like, oh God, finally, it's, this game's gonna get better now. There are no objectives in that map. Everything else that's extra on that map is just fucking free space. Enemies don't even move. Like, if you capture a base, nothing else spawns. Like, I captured a Yiga base, you know, the little red Yiga guys. Captured those guys. There were still enemies in the fort, but no ally units spawn. So they can't even recapture the fort I just took and left them all in there for. There's nothing happens. You just move forward and collect your free fucking, like, chest, which has some random ass materials in it. You don't even collect, like, heart pieces like normal anymore. Like, it's just... They just removed so much shit that made, like, it's all these little things that kept you engaged in the overall gameplay. It's just all gone now. And while you're doing this, the game keeps fucking chugging its fucking frame rates. So it doesn't even <laughs> feel fun while you're going through it. And what sucks, though, is that, like, they had these little improvements that are so good. Like, it's Breath of the Wild inspired. So, like, normally when you, like, a big enemy, like, jumps and does, like, a spin attack, they're like, whoa, and be dizzy. And you can hit their weakness point and then do, like, a big combo on them, right? Now, you can bring up that weakness point, 
on your own by doing like a headshot or like jumping up with like a Libatech and smack him in the head. And now when you dodge, you do the flurry attack from Breath of the Wild, you know, where you dodge and just mash the fucking button and hit yeah, the yeah. at this point. They in- improved the combat. Characters have cool little combos and everyone has their own little gimmick button. Like there are little things that feel so much better, but the actual overall like gameplay has been streamlined to the point where it just it doesn't feel engaging, you know? It feels like a theme park version of a Warriors game. It's not what I not what I wanted. So now when you traverse the overworld, do you like move it do you move across it like you do with Breath of the Wild, where you've got like horses and you got the paraglider? No, you still uh there is a paraglider if you're doing like air combos, but you you still just run around like a regular Warriors game. They didn't change that part at least. Uh well other mm. thing that does suck is they actually removed a lot of content too. Okay, so this is this one's just me, but I liked Adventure Mode, and it's gone. So and there's not even a free play mode, which is a staple in literally every game where you can just do a map and just fight, you know, with whatever enemies you want. Granted, in, in Hyrule Warriors 1, you would never do that because you'd rather just go to Adventure Mode and unlock shit in, in those free maps. But the point is, is that there are regular-ass maps. There are no more regular-ass maps. You just do story mode missions. And then a gimmick level, like, beat these 300 enemies with this weapon in, in four minutes, or, like, do this without getting hit once, and that's it. That's it. You just do story and, like, two gimmicks, and that's it. That is the entire game. There's nothing there. It's streamlined. Uh, a lot of things are cut out. And I looked this up of why the fuck it went down so poorly. Nintendo was more involved in this one. Uh, who who was it that was it Band, was it it's, Bandai it's, Namco? It's Koei Tecmo. They're the, one, they're the Warriors guys. They, you know, worked basically almost entirely on their own. That's why there are so many fucking OCs in Hyrule Warriors 1, you know? And then this one, because it was Breath of the Wild theme, Nintendo would like, you know, oh, looming over them with their fucking like massive, like gigantic hand on their shoulder, telling them what, <laughs> what to and not to do. And that's why, at least the way I see it, it feels a lot worse. Apparently this is just like me and like a couple other like hardcore like fans of it, I feel like. Because I've seen a lot of people who still praise it, but I don't know. I can't stand it. It really disappointed me. I have only like seven and a half hours in that game compared to like the over a hundred I have the first one. Man, it's just like, it, it's so disappointing disappointing it it just did you it, beat it or did you not even i didn't even, just like i'm done i didn't even beat it which admittedly apparently i was near uh, fun fact seven hours i was near the end it's only about uh. it's only about nine hours long so yeah i mean that, that, that that's the worst part too is i think about like, i look over i'm like man i should just i should just get it over with and beat it and then i'm like oh, but i hate the way it fucking runs i mean i can <laughs> i can forgive it too if it didn't fucking chunk all the time it's really bad it's just it's just a miserable experience but i see the potential in it which hurts even more but anyway, on the plus side, I did play a video game that's older. It came out uh, nine years ago, soon to be uh, ten years ago. I started playing I Divine Cybermancy. Listen, fuck Cyberpunk. I got I. <laughs> All right, now Ted, I, I know how I know, are your legs feeling? My legs are okay. Now I know I know I'm <laughs> taking over. This is trust me. This is relevant. So Ted. Think of a video game that you played. Have you ever like just gotten into a game? You just really liked it, like the world and the characters, and just you just felt like immersed into it. That uh, yeah, Half Life Alex, which is uh, one of the best video games ever made, and has completely changed my opinion on VR from being a gimmick to being the next step in video games because it's fucking incredible. Now I have a yeah, p- Alex. I have opinions on VR, but I'll save those because Tad, I is not that game. I is the least immersive <laughs> game I think I've ever played in my life. This game is <laughs> fucking stupid. I I love the mission where you walk out into New Eden. Your ma- your mentor is like, uh, go out there and be sneaky. Do not make waves. I walk out. I hear like the music. I look around like the, the, the cool lighting. Now it, it's Source Engine. It's a 2011 indie Source game made by French people. It doesn't look pretty, but I'm like, these stores look cool. Like, all right, I kind of feel how this is, and then immediately. Five entire seconds in, the fucking federal goons just spawn in, start shooting at me. I hear the fucking source effect, this that, thwack, 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 hitting around in the fucking distance. I hear the source explosion, and the, the source <laughs> sound like when you get hit by like a, a rocket, you know, the, like I have the, your ears like ring. Dee. Yeah, I, like all the source noises hit me at once, and I'm just like, Oh, this game is going to be dumb. It sounds like you entered a TF2 server. <laughs> it's, ah, 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 ah. Like, the sound of a dispenser. I, I was going to give that game a shot to get into it, but the game is ju- it's just a video game. Enemies don't like talk or act. They just they just home in on you and run at you to die. <laughs> and there's like there's no it's- NPCs. <laughs> and like everything is like it's dirty and muddy cuz it's a bunch of source textures, you know? So it just looks like shit. Nothing looks lived in. Nothing 
nothing looks interesting except for like like one level of New Eden. It is just like, <laughs> and everything looks like it's a ripoff of something else. Like the enemies look like kill zone goons. And if you watched Mandalore's gaming gaming review of it, uh, you know you know exactly what I'm talking about. The game is uh, very derivative in like the worst way, but. I ended up really falling in love with it once I got the hang of it. It's really fun. Because it's just like a mess. It's just like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm digging it. I tried playing the game before. I only had three and a half hours into it, like a uh, full on year ago. And uh, what happened is, it's like, oh, dude, I just got co op in all the story modes. I'm like, wait, really? Like, yeah, yeah I can just play co op the whole way through. Let's play it. So all my friends jump in. And by playing co op, they just backstab me over and over and over again every time I spawn, ruin all of my stats because I get co the commotions. And then once we get into the base, they start killing all the goons, uh, all the allies, and, and then I couldn't progress through the story. And that was three and a half hours. So I played it again without telling them and then ended up enjoying the experience a lot more because I was actually <laughs> able to play it. <laughs> it sounds like this is that game. Everyone has that game that's objectively not good, but they really, really like it. Like Xeno Clash is just a good game, right? That, that that's a playable good game. I is a confusing fucking mess of things that don't really work, but there's something about it, it right? It's a, it's it, it's the fact that the, the dialogue is really funny, where it's like, hey, fuck you, asshole! I'll rip off your face and wear it as a moron face party mask, <laughs> or or like you have like, hey. Uh, dude, go into the bar and, and interrogate this guy. We need more information about this cyber brain we found. Like, okay. It's like, hey there, buddy. You want some drink? And you say, no, I don't want any of your dog piss. You drag him forward? Tell me about the cyber brain <laughs> right fucking now. You're like, whoa there, buddy. No need to have such a cow. You have three options. You have murder him, pay him, or kick him in the nuts. You cannot be <laughs> nice to people. Like, you just treat everybody like shit. Or my favorite is there's this one random bandit who's hanging out on Mars, you can talk to. He's like, leave me alone. I'm having a bad day today. He's like, oh, what's wrong, buddy? Your wife died or something? Yeah, actually, she did. I'm like, uh, <laughs> and you can be like, oh, that's unfortunate. Boo-hoo, why don't you cry me a fucking river? And <laughs> or the the nicest thing you can say is... Kick him in the nuts. No, 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 is, uh, oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. Why don't you tell me the story about it? He's like, well, you see... When I first ran up to Mars, I saw my wife over in the distance, and you can immediately hit him with, and you saw her blowing some other guy, which then immediately ah. makes him fight you. Like, ah. you're just an <laughs> asshole. God, it's like you're playing a RuneScape character. <laughs> or, like, you have to ask some guys nicely to use their telecom, so you can say, excuse me, sir, can I please use your telecom, or, listen here, you little shit, ch -ch -ch. I'm a member of the Seeker Secura, you're gonna let me use your fucking teleporter, I'm gonna fucking blow your goddamn cyber brains out. <laughs> your cyber brains. I, <laughs> Fuck. It's, the, like, when you do that, you just run with this shitty dialogue, and then you just run around with your friends, just, uh, because you can, you can change the spawn rates to be infinitely spawning and like maximum amounts. So you play with like eight people. You just, you're just basically playing fucking horde mode while, while a couple of like dynamic objectives pop up. It's actually really <laughs> fun. I've been playing some multiplayer too now that I got my goon done. I did all the cycles of guilt. My favorite ending was actually the Federation ending because I, it was a lot different. But uh, yeah, it is a game that is like objectively, because it's an indie fucking source game made in 2011. Like it is objectively like jank. And there's a lot of, like, mechanics and systems. Like, it looks really complex, and then you realize that, like, oh, man, I leveled up, like, 80 of my accuracy to use better guns. I now have 15 extra damage on my pistol. Like, does it, it doesn't actually matter. Like, base damage on guns is all that really matters. It's just, like, a handful of viable guns. And, like, <laughs> so, like, it's it looks super complex, but if you just want to play and beat it, you just kind of grab, with like, this and that, and you just kind of win, you know? It's super weird. Uh, it's hard for me to recommend unless you're willing to uh, embrace the cycles of guilt and make sure you <laughs> uh, and make sure you invest in all your shit. Uh, it's, it's really fun. I really like it. Uh, once I got into it and uh, didn't play with my friends, I highly recommend playing by yourself just to level up your guy a little bit and then play with other people. Like at least do the story once by yourself, then do it with other people so you at the very least get to experience the game before they start ruining it for you. It's hard to uh, it's hard to recommend Jank to someone because janky games there's something about them that'll appeal to you because otherwise they wouldn't be janky they would just be good games right yeah. which is why twisted pixel is my favorite developer of video games i'm sorry moon sprout developers of bug fable zero lasting <laughs> sapling now on switch ps4 xbox one and pc <laughs> but i 
I love Twisted Pixel. There is an energy to their games. Alex will back me up on this. Yeah. They have made two good games. <laughs> Explosion Man, and then the game I haven't even talked to you about, to you, the listener, about yet. Everything else is kind of shit. Comic Jumper? <laughs> that game, Alex, Comic Jumper fucking sucks. Okay, listen, listen, listen. All right, all right, all right sit here. Ted, Ted, you see my cartoon avatar? It's crossing its arms right now. In defense of Comic Jumper. That's the thing, right? About Twisted Pixel. Their <laughs> games are rushed, underfunded. They're like missing important good game design. But motherfucker, there's something about the charm. There's something about so... Star saying, oh, come on, I got a raid tonight. <laughs> like the writing in their games is so, it keeps me in. Like Comic Jumper is way too hard. Uh, your character looks really cool, but the more you're damaged, like what, you, what you, Twisted Pixel does is they have an idea and they just put it in there, but the idea doesn't really work super well. Like Comic Jumper, when you got hit, you lost, uh, you lost color and every new comic book you went into, you looked different and brand new, but you spend most of the fucking game at half health or less because you don't, there's no healing spots. So you never get to see your character. So comic jumper is just this white scratchy monster the entire game. <laughs> I, okay. So I really like in comic jumper is we saw this when we were teenagers. And I say it as an adult, that's basically what kind of video game I would have invented of just like a stupid superhero doing stupid things. And now that people see my fucking stupid creations in our bards and artists and, uh, discord because i've been drawing for it's been a little over a year now and i'm definitely a lot better than when i first started out and had my little corner life crisis but uh comic jumper is basically what i would have made as a kid or like a teenager it's basically uh yeah it's basically tv man right there <laughs> it's pretty much the entire <laughs> sense of, that is my entire sense of humor just all right back to back to back <laughs> It's just stuff like there's all these little things like when you go into the manga one, you go from all the other ones, you go left to right. But in the manga one, you go right to left and then Brad is in there and Brad keeps trying to kill himself, but he can't die. <laughs> Shit like that, where he's like, just you go in there and the first thing you see is Brad pouring himself a beer and putting sleeping pills in it and trying to kill himself. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Like, like Loco Cycle. Loco Cycle is the concept is there's a super smart fancy bike the mechanic pablo gets stuck to it and then the bike has to go to scottsburg indiana for the biker fest and so it like drives around and it just drags him and the gameplay is fun for like 15 minutes <laughs> and then you realize that's the extent until you get to the boss fights which are like a really bad street fighter clone <laughs> they have ideas but they don't have the budget and they don't have, and if you're listening, I'm very sorry. They don't have the skill Aww. to pull it off. <laughs> but God damn it, if I have not 100% in Loco Cycle on Steam and Xbox, dude, watching the, the cutscenes are live action because it's like a it's like a really bad B movie. Like it's so low budget that in the cutscenes the bikes don't move because they can't so they aren't functional bikes they can roll back and forth and they can turn on a light and that's it that's all they could do but like oh my god I, I look at it and I think this this is the energy I crave like the ending to Miss Splosion Man you can tell that they just made some paper mache costumes rented out a fucking a, an event hall put up a fake wedding and they're like, they were throwing dudes through tables and shit. And like the guy's costumes were a fucking bath cap and like a shitty Walmart doctor's coat. And that was it. Those are the big science guy and like swim goggles. And the thing that pains me most about twisted Pixel is I can't like recommend one of their games without going, well, remember they're also a small team. Well, remember they have very little budget. Well, this one had a fast dev cycle. Uh, after Comic Jumper and uh, came out, there was Loco Cycle and there was Gun Stringer, which was the Connect game. Then they fucking went bankrupt and the company closed, right? Then I think it was the Game Awards last year or the year before, where they were announced that they were like, "Hey, we're making new games. They're with Oculus now, and they were making VR games." It's like, whoa, oh, crazy! I played the B Team, which was another game that's like. The idea was that they were trying to make what looked like an NES game based on a non-existent 80s live action like TV show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like you would finish a level and then they would have like this really small pixelated version of someone's face and the character model in game was like something completely different <laughs> and like they tried to be funny but it wasn't and the game kind of fucking sucked it was like an endless runner and then like a really badly done WarioWare micro games where you know how in WarioWare like usually you can figure out exactly what you need to do within the time frame to do it. Yeah. Imagine that, but like you don't have the time frame to figure it out. So you just fail it three times in a row because you don't know what they want you to do. <laughs> and then they finally did it. They finally made a game. I could just go, yes, this game is very good. And that is path of the warrior. It is final fight but first person. And that's all they fucking needed to do to make a good game. They need a game where the core gameplay loop was good. And then they can add all their bullshit. They finally did it, Alex. I Did you finish watching? I, I sent him a link to the to the first, uh, yeah, I, first I, level. I really liked how you, you see the citizen and you just like punch the bomb a bunch to, to beat up the bomb and save them. It's a really adorable game. You just you walk over it. You just punch people. You can punch them in the nuts. You can punch them in the face. You can uppercut them. And, you know, you actually use your real hands. And then bop, 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 bop. They get low. You pick them up and you can throw them at enemies or you can throw them at the environment. You can pick up anything. You can pick up a glass bottle and crack them over the head. Then you get to the boss and it's like fucking mosh, Eddie. And it's like all this goofy ass shit. It's I haven't beaten it yet. I got to like the fourth level. I got, I got to like the last level, but I've been enjoying it. I've been so happy that I could finally go. Yes, they made a game that is funny. It plays well. There is gameplay variety. You're not doing the same thing you did in the first 10 minutes of the entire fucking game, like Comic Jumper. <laughs> there was Splosion Man, Miss Splosion Man, and then garbage until Path of the Warrior. And maybe Wilson's Heart. I haven't played that one yet. That one's apparently like a serious thriller. I don't know. That's VR as well. But goddamn, I love Twisted Pixel so much, Alex. They so. So I wanted to, to talk about, I guess, one uh, one thing, two things. They're really short. So, uh, unfortunately, everybody, unfortunately, I was wrong once in my life. I will freely admit it. But Mr. Fortnite did not get into Smash Brothers this year. Unfortunately, it was Sephiroth instead, which I uh, am surprised because Final Fantasy uh, Square Enix has been apparently uh, allegedly very weird with their uh, IPs lately. So I didn't I had never expected him to get in only because of Square's attitude lately. But a good for him. I had a feeling that if Sephiroth was going to get in, he would be a DLC character because people are willing to pay for Sephiroth. Yeah. People are willing to pay for Minecraft Steve. People are less willing to pay for Min Min. <laughs> People you know? are less willing to play for Gino. It was it was just turn, bro. I don't care about Gino. <laughs> I kneel. I I for one do not give a shit about Gino only because he'd be a zoner. We talked about this a long time ago. But uh, he's in. Uh, I really like that one quote someone said of uh, that, that scene of uh, him stabbing Mario with the fucking sword. It said, if this came out in 2000, this would be someone's form signature. <laughs> he's completely right. <laughs> uh i they held that for so long i remember watching it i was like oh, i can't believe mario is fucking dead alex i thought they were gonna do a double reveal and there was gonna be like Eris or whatever Aerith, and she was gonna show up and revive mario i thought i thought mario fucking died <laughs> it was it was a pretty good trailer i actually really liked it uh i'm not really a big final fantasy fan so like i don't care that much but uh i, th I think the idea of just oh yeah sephiroth is in smash is kind of funny because i know how popular he is and there's one last thing I want to talk about. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste a big segment on it because I think I think I'd say that for later. But there's one thing I got into this year. Uh, I wouldn't say really got into. It just I was doing research of it, and I have a really really quick uh, preview of it. Hey Tad, VTubers are fucking cringe. <laughs> they are. I I have try I have tried many many times whenever someone and i'm in a, like a discord or whatever and they'll post a link to like oh this was really funny if it's a japanese one i don't even bother clicking if it's an english one i'll click it and then probably pause the video after 10 seconds because it's not funny okay i cannot handle the japanese ones alex okay. i can't do it okay you know what i'm not strong enough i changed my mind i'm talking about it we're, we're making this one hours and 30 minutes i don't give a shit these people are paying know, money we'll talk about this and then right. origami king right, afterwards i don't it. give a two shit two hour episode okay? right, i'm talking about it. i'm talking about it. I'm doing this. i right. wrote two pages about origami king if this is a three hour long son of a bitch i don't even care all right i'm doing it then fine fuck it all right 
Let me explain something. I was trying to put down the VTuber episode together, but as I was doing the research, I just kind of felt like this isn't really worth like a whole fucking episode. This is better for like a segment. So I'm going to do the segment here. <laughs> They're not worth it. They're below me. Okay, 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 okay. So I, 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 I got to do a slight story of how this all happened. Thinking others are below you, Alex, is that you just got a brief taste of what it's like to be me <laughs> all of the time. <laughs> no, listen, 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 listen. No. Someone on the Discord, our Discord, two people actually, I won't say their names. It was Roy and Lazen Men. Those two <laughs> fucks pissed me off like nobody's goddamn business. One so day, I banned them. One day, I was minding my own business. I don't even know what I was doing because I, I wasn't playing Wax. I, I definitely, this was pretty wild. This, this was actually You're up. just trying to exist. I'm, one of your Discord notifications is me telling you about all the bad things at Homestuck 2 and you keep trying to click <laughs> off of it. I, I am, I'm just sitting there T-posing like always. And then... This uh, this was actually, I think, technically, like, early last year. This is when it started. No, wait, this year. When, when, when did we do our Catherine the Great VTubers episode? VTubers were this year, because no one was able to go outside and have actual friends. When did we do our Catherine the Gate episode? Because this is when this happened. This was, like, right after... That was record. this year. Okay, so that it was, was this year. year. So around that time... All we of the somewhat accurate histories were this year. So when... I, well, if you want to count China, I think that was last year, like, the very end. But I don't count China That was before we became a history podcast. So that's when we were... That, that was the transition into it, where we started talking about history before we, we made it our thing. When you realize video games fucking suck, we have nothing to say say about him anyway two pages about origami King. okay let me do my thing let me do, i swear i swear you you'll, I know, you'll I get your Go thing ahead. okay okay so anyway at one point in time it was a big deal that some random person went to twitch to start streaming that person was named project melody and the people in our discord were talking about it and i'm like who the fuck is project melody and these two fucks come up to me and they're like, how the fuck do you not know who Project Melody is, Alex? Yeah, you should know. She's a fucking you famous... Dumb boomer. She's a famous star in Chatterbait. And I'm like, what the fuck is Chatterbait? And then <laughs> then those two and a couple other motherfuckers are just like, wow, Alex, I didn't know you were such a boomer. And that made me so fucking mad that these people <laughs> made fun of me for not knowing what the fuck those two things were now of course i think i kind of i could I guess what chatterbait was with the fucking Using name. your context clues i mean i could guess what that fucking was but i was just like they're, call, they're coming <laughs> at my discord call me a boomer so i go to fucking 4chan the the, the source Come to my house i suck my dick <laughs> Call me gay. I I made it a mission to find out what this shit is. So rather than Google, I go to fucking Fortune. I'm like, all right, hit me up with the. You can if you guys go to Fortune. If you guys go to those fucking threads for those VTubers, you might have seen my post. I just asked who the fuck is Project Melody and give me her best shit. I'm pissed off and submit. And then they send me <laughs> they sent me the frickening. That's what I was quoting, by the way, in the Catherine the Great episode. That's why I mentioned that. That was that was the time frame of when this was going on. So, basically, she what, what Melody is, is she's a fucking chick who uses her little VTuber mo model and then just the fucking masturbates for, for money on, on a fucking website. And I was skimming through the fucking thing, because I, 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 I don't give a shit about a Miku, uh, Miku Miku mo dance model that's naked. Like, it's... I'm fucking... Like, I've seen this shit a million times. I don't care. I'm an adult. Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm skimming through it. There's this one clip. There's one clip that I, that I stopped on where I unironically... Got a little jealous. So where I started, I, I, a little jealous, but also kind of understood. Okay, I, I'm, I'm starting to get this now. There's this one bit. She, she was just sitting there with a fucking vibrator up her cooch. This is gonna be gross, by the way. Uh, yeah. Uh, someone says donates like five dollars and says, "Hey, quote SpongeBob at me." So she goes, "The Krusty Krab is unfair. Mr. Krabs is in there, but standing at the concession." Plotting his oppression, but before she finishes, a guy pops up it's called Melody is my waifu, donates eight hundred dollars, and cranks up the vibrator to maximum overdrive, and she says, Oh fuck, and like 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 tumbles over. And I thought to myself, that that bitch just got eight hundred dollars to quote a SpongeBob quote. I used to quote SpongeBob every day for free. What the fuck am I doing? Why can't I be an anime girl and make free money? <laughs> She got $800 not for just quoting Spongebob. I mean, if you want to put a vibrator up your butt on like a like a stream with like a 2D image of yourself doing it, I mean, I guess you could do that. But I mean, I'm just going to say, Alex, I think that money was not primarily for the funny Spongebob. Well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. She, she's up there quoting Spongebob, getting, getting X amount of goddamn dollars. Getting XXX amount of dollars. And then I, I, I learned uh, that the future is here. And uh, But before we even 
finished VR, we made a device to have sex from long distances called the Frick Machine, which is like some weird device that was designed for gynecologists that was then co-opted by horny people to then turn it into a fuck machine. So like a fucking anime girl. Uh, someone acting yeah, as an anime girl from like from all the way from Texas. But anyway. This is the Oasis. The Oasis is now. The pods are coming. Uh, so <laughs> wear the mask, eat the bugs, watch the Star Wars, and read the Marvel. So so I looked into what the fuck a VTuber was. I figured they weren't all just fucking quoting SpongeBob with a fucking dildo up their butt. So I fucking find this whole goddamn hellhole, and I was doing You'd all be this research. How accurate that describes most VTubers. So so the, the, the quick and during this entire thing, coincidentally, Hollow Life English came out. Because I can I can't I don't know Japanese. All right, I, I don't know how to fucking I don't know what the heck these people are fucking saying unless they're doing like an English thing like fucking peeking me. Or they're like the English ones I've seen, or the Japanese ones are like the worst of the YouTube reactor people, where they're just screaming and making noise, and they just do that over YouTube videos. It is like the worst of the back when let's playing was a thing. It is the worst of the let's plays, but there's an anime girl on it, so that <laughs> makes it okay. Okay, 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 okay. So. So someone had a hot take, Tad, that was so fucking accurate. I think you'll like it. Uh, VTubers are Doubt it. VTubers are the Muppets for Weeaboos. <laughs> what? So, so anyway, so anyway, so, 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 so. While looking through all this shit, I don't like any of the Japanese ones of anywhere, even like the indie, indie ones or, or the Hololive <laughs> ones, except for Pikami, because Pikami also speaks in English. She speaks in God's language. So I at least know what she's fucking saying. But Alex just doesn't like the Japanese in general, just as a people. <laughs> but uh, no, no, listen. When Hololive English came out, that whole lore... I was watching a lot of their things, both their actual streams and their, their compilations. I was doing all this, like, actual research, just jotting all this shit down, because I was, I was generally interested in putting out an episode together featuring these people. And you you mentioned that Let's Play thing. That's kind of what I kind of came to the conclusion of, too. Wait, so they just play video games and just do whatever. The thing that I fucking hate, it makes me so fucking mad, Tad, is the Hollow Life English people... All they fucking do is play, like, one gimmick game, and they all fucking play Minecraft together. I fucking hate Minecraft, Ted. It is so fucking boring. I cannot do <laughs> research about how these, like, characters and their lore and shit acts when they're just fucking playing goddamn Minecraft. It is awful. I would rather play Hyrule Warriors, too. Do you know why they were playing Minecraft? It's easy to do collabs with it. Yeah, because they're all under the same company. So if you're if you're someone who's like, oh, man, this anime girl that looks like a shark gives me the big boner. <laughs> and then you watch her streams because, you know, it, it's called a benophilia, Alex. It's actually not illegal in some Pakistani states. Uh, uh, aren't, isn't the isn't the shark one supposed to be a little girl? I don't know anything. about uh, She's this. not supposed to be a lolly. She's just she's just tiny. She's just supposed to be a fucking gremlin. That, that's Alex, you can't say that word. You're going to you're going to get put on a list. What tiny? <laughs> yeah, that's the word I was talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't, don't. They're all under the same company. So they just do that so that someone can. It's like when you'll listen to a podcast and then they advertise another podcast like Jacked Podcast. Let's do an ad read. Hey, Samurai. Yeah, you. I know an edge runner when I see one. You've got your face, your deckhead and a couple of Mori's for your next run. But you ain't no gonk brain, right? You know the score. Eddie's up front before it going dark. And you know that you should jam it to Jacked, a real play cyberpunk RPG podcast. Brought to you by friend of the show, Asterios Kokonos. Listen in as they tackle the mean streets of Bay City in the faraway future of 2013 in the original pen and paper cyberpunk RPG. Let's get jacked. It is another perfect day in Rombly Tower, the home of CompuGlobe Corporation and the Church of Execution, a.k.a. the Church of EXE. One of us has to keep it together in this stupid city, and it's gonna be me. Uh, that's just a hiccup in the great program. If you want to get to the fight, we can just get to the fight. 
you know, I was I was thinking about uh, getting to the fight. Four solos that I can see, armed, armed to the goddamn teeth. Kid, this is not good. When I signed an old school gutter guitar style trio, everyone thought I was crazy. They were like, gutter guitar's dead. And I was like, no, 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 my friends. <laughs> nostalgia, nostalgia is a lie. Our father, who art a computer. If there's stacks of cash, stuff that looks like it's made out of gold, stuff I can just carry real fast as I run towards the helicopter. Keep your goddamn heads down. You can find a link in the description or go to jackedpodcast.com to listen to Jacked, a real play cyberpunk RPG podcast. Log up. The future is ours. Avoid the Garfield Eats. So anyway, Alex, like I was saying, where people shamelessly shill other podcasts <laughs> or, you know, their shows that are within their network and they're being paid to advertise because I genuinely enjoy it. Uh, jackpodcast.com. The future is now. Avoid the Garfield Eats. <laughs> OK, OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> you're just baffled i don't know what the i'm trying to, I'm trying to piece my brain together because i'm picturing what the fuck that ad that that mystery ad read you put i in don't there. know alex maybe you should listen to the fucking episodes i put out that don't have you in them tad because i'm your good friend tad you son of a bitch all right people fans who have, who have made it 70 minutes into this episode i'm going to tell you some deepest lore i have not listened to a single episode of our own podcast i don't know what tad keeps or doesn't keep i'm gonna be completely honest with you i go to the video press pause to uh, like all of your comments do a shit post on the ones i think are funny and then i don't never look at that video again <laughs> <laughs> this son of a bitch you know i mean i guess it's good because i just i do like uh i'm actually an excellent excellent uh gmod animator and i just make you say racial slurs alex <laughs> you deep fake my my face over pewdiepie <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what are you doing? We're playing PUBG. And you're going. You're going really fast towards that bridge. <laughs> okay. 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 Let me let me explain something. So there is a little there is a little little little, little fun thing about about the the Hollow Live uh, English girls because obviously I, I I know English. I'm just gonna go focus on the, the the new the new hotness. So there are the five the the the, the, the big five. You got the squid. <laughs> the five gangs of New York. You got. You got, you got the squid Ina. You got Callie, the fucking Grim Reaper. You got Amelia Watson, who's a detective. You got Kiara, who's a phoenix, and then Gura, who's a fucking shark. Now, the little shark is the most popular one by a fucking mile. In fact, she's overtaken even the original Japanese VTubers at this point. Gura can't be stopped. She's a little fucking shit post. Whatever happened to... Uh, Robot Jones? I don't know, Kokoro, or whatever her name was. The original one, with the hat that had like the like the bunny ears or whatever. She got, didn't she get like sold to China or something? I mean, Kazuna. I don't know Kizuna? anything about VTubers. Kazuna, I uh, well, she does have a different actress playing her, but the original actress actually still works at the company. She's a uh, she's basically like she basically writes everything that the, 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 the that the actress then plays as the character. It's really weird. She doesn't do the character. Like anymore. I got a notification on my phone because I have I have a I have an Oculus Quest. I had to install the app on my phone. And I got like an ad where it's like Kazuna AI doing a live concert, and I was like, I'm not interested in this at all. <laughs> but that's why that's why I was thinking of the name. Yeah, so a different person plays Kazuna, but the original actress is still like at the company. She still works there. She just doesn't act as the character. But uh, from all of the characters, I appreciate that we all thought Amelia was going to be the normal one because she's not like a like a monster, and she's actually the weirdest one, where she's like actually like a fucking like shut in loser who now has power. My favorite one, my favorite out of context quote was uh, to, to put in context of how she acts. She's like, "Hey, chat, want to hear me crack my toes? You just, just you hear that? You hear that, chat? You just like cracks the edges, like you hear that? I don't I'm just know. like, Ugh. so uh, I don't so, know. Listening, uh, I, I have very strong feelings about like streamers and podcasts and shit. Where when someone's part of a bigger company. And they're like putting on a character. It's really off-putting to me. Personality this consultant. Is, yeah, <laughs> like like I I used to listen to to those who I think I'm pretty sure I've said this on the show before. But I used to used to listen to a lot of the Maximum Fun podcast, my brother, my brother, and me, and all that. And then I was going through their website, and then I saw that they had personality consultants for their episodes, and I'm like, oh, 
so this is all a sham. I'm really not interested anymore. Well, and then I also found out that they fudge their roles in their D&D show, so I just axed that one as soon as I found that out. I'm not I'm not interested anymore. Goodbye. Oof. <laughs> like, what, you're, you're completely missing everything that's fun about D&D. Get, get the fuck out of here. Now... I don't want to listen to your shitty show. Now, I was thinking, I found, uh... Well, okay, uh... So the Hollow Life English girls, I don't know if I should necessarily say this in great detail, but uh, we have found all of them who like they actually are, and, because a bunch of those those jealous aunties tried to like dig, dig them all out, and what I thought was funny is every single one ended up being like the Scolliams thing of just, oh no, they're hot. It's just like, <laughs> I'm gonna finally, ha ah, yes, this Calliope Mori, <laughs> she put out that rap song, now I know exactly who she is. Oh no, she's attractive and successful, damn it! Ugh, just gotta cross that one out. Uh, uh, ah, yes, finally, we found Kiara. Ah, oh no, she's a very attractive and popular cast player. Damn it! And they crossed that one out, too. Like, all of them I are mean, just, like, about normal it like this, people. Alex. Which streamers do you know of that are big and popular and famous that aren't, like, attractive and successful and popular? I was gonna say, like, I could definitely cut... There's, like, three. I can cut out a there's, like, Moon Moon, I guess. Uh, Moon is not a... I'm a cutie pie just because it's ironic. I guess, and he played League of Legends for a long time, so his name is. I known. was gonna say, uh, I, he's a, he's successful, but he's not attractive. Tyler One, the apex human being, <laughs> the guy who God, I can't, I can't stand his fucking streams. The homunculus. I watched it once with you, and I'm like, this guy just seems genuinely like an asshole and not enjoyable. I, don't, I guess, I guess he makes loud noises sometimes. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's art. You just don't wow. get it. But uh... no, I get it. It's it's the same shit as those fucking YouTuber react videos. I hate it. I hate it so much. But, uh, Ooh, I'm a Grinch. There's, there's one thing. There's one thing that I actually like. And this is important. I, I really want to say it. This will be like my last thing before you can go go on and, and bitch about how Origami King is. Uh, you know, cross your arms in defense of Origami King. Uh, <laughs> one thing I found out is that through this whole VTuber thing, I thought it was really interesting how they even exist as a, as a concept. Where like, let's just get let's just get out of the way. Being a girl on the internet can be fucking annoying. Like, I, I personally already hate people fucking coming up and talking to me. I cannot imagine how irritating it must be to have a goddamn pair of tits and a vagina on the internet. You probably get bugged all the time. for Again, you're minding your own fucking business, and it just has to be too fucking difficult. Imagine. Like, I, I've told this story before a long time ago, and I'm going to tell it again because it perfectly summarizes this. I was playing Dota 2... And this was back when, you know, Dota 2 wasn't a, a part-time job. And uh, there was some girl playing. She hadn't spoken all game. She says, hey, uh, I'm going to head bot. Can I have uh, Twisted Treant come with me? And then our blood seeker or whatever just types in chat, sex. <laughs> and she didn't speak again for the rest of the game. <laughs> I forgot that story. I... <laughs> That's what it's like. Imagine, God forbid... Liking anything even slightly nerdy and being a girl. Holy shit, that's got to be so bad. And we're not trying to be facetious. Well, I'm not anyway. I, I genuinely feel bad. Uh, like, that, that's I, I do situation. too. Like, fucking imagine trying to go into a fucking uh, a TF2 server. And then you get these fucking annoying, like, weirdos, right? Like, you're just trying to play fucking pyro because you just got the jetpack and it's really cool and you got the fucking, you got the fucking extinguisher and it's awesome, but you just have these people that are fucking weird about everything. Can, I just want to play a game. God, it's got to suck. Uh, but, uh, I mean, hell, what I liked about it is that, uh, the VTuber is, uh, how do I say this? It's kind of almost sad I feel like it's kind of fucked up that like in order to be like a like a popular like streamer as a girl you have to wear like a mask you know like Tyler one and moon 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 can come in here with his bald and ass head and glasses and he can be a big popular personality a girl can't necessarily do that though girls gotta like either just turn into a fucking sex object like fucking Pokemon or something where she has to cut where she has to ban the fact that she has a boyfriend from being discussed on her discord like you, you're not allowed to like be like a normal human being, you know. You have to wear like a mask or just completely lie, you know. I, I, feel, I generally feel bad about this that that we had to be like we have to do the oasis is going to have to happen just because girls are not allowed to enjoy things from through no fault of their own, you know. But just because it's a video games are like a a, a male dominated um, activity. Well, it de I mean, dep I don't know, depending on the genre of video game, all that shit, whatever. People that are on Twitch, right? Yeah. You've got like 70 
65% male, right? Mm -hmm. Just because video games have become, they're like a competitive thing for a very, very long time. You had shit like Die Katana, where it's like, John Romero's going to make you his bitch. You had advertising like that. Or the fucking Rayman one, <laughs> where he, Rayman's got a huge dick. It has a massive schlong. <laughs> Do you think it's like suspended in midair, like his arms and legs? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, like a helicopter has the has the blades at top and it has the blades at back that stabilizes. <laughs> I was t I was talking about something before I got distracted by Rayman Dick. It was it was uh video games are are like a sixty five male dominated. Yeah, they're they're largely male dominated. Yeah. It, pretty much anything where you have majority of males, it, they're f men's fucking caveman brains mixed with the fact that people who play video games generally aren't very well. Like they don't like know how to act socially very well despite playing like games well, that force you to interact there, with other there's people there's also a, uh, a different thing though like the way you act in front of like a person you're sitting across from the table versus uh, someone across your computer screen is different like you would you would not like start just randomly trash talking some guy at like the grocery store but you would start trash talking a guy who just died in bot lane in your league of legends games you know what i mean so you have the yeah. your, your the safety of being like a hundred miles away you can just type sex at the first girl you see <laughs> because you you know it's <laughs> funny it's gonna mess with her and you know there's literally no repercussions for your actions you get to act differently and you're also like 13 years old. yeah but but you know what i mean there's an extra layer of like consequence free going on for you that yeah. brings out that attitude but but there's one vtuber i found that i actually ended up really really uh getting into not necessarily their content but it's, but the, their backstory their lore that was uh, mm. a vtuber what you humming at motherfucker no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm listening. Uh, it's uh, Iron Mouse. So Iron Mouse's whole thing is, uh, yeah, she's, she's talked about this before, so I don't want to steal her spotlight. But basically, uh, she has an immune deficiency. She's actually one of those bubble kids. So uh, she's very sick, and she sits on her fucking like bed all day long, doesn't do anything. She can't go outside, especially nowadays. Uh, she basically just lives up there. She's got little oxygen tubes in her nose. She doesn't like eat food normally. She's just like a little sick dying girl. Well, I wouldn't say little, but she's like she's like fucking twenty something. But like she's just a young dying lady, and she picked up VTubing because she was just sitting. Because all she does is sit in her fucking room on her laptop, watch anime, play video games, and masturbate. Her her words, <laughs> not mine. So because she was so bored and lonely, she just picked up the VTubing thing because she know she can't like show her like tubes up her nose hospital looking ass face on the, on a fucking monitor so she got a little vtuber thing and she ended up getting very popular for you know like a non hollow live like vtuber thing is and i was really interested in like like here's the the, the one of like 100 of of it being used for good you know of like this yeah like this this is the example that's like hey this could be used for good the idea of a character when you're streaming is something that's been done before, like, you know, Dr. Disrespect and all that stuff. Yeah. You have those people that have like their, their gamer names, like Ninja and all those, like it's an idea that you kind of, that's, it's a smart idea because streaming is such a fucking populated, like city 17 fucking core. There's so goddamn many people streaming. You have to have it. What's your, what's your hook? You gotta have a gimmick, right? I see the potential for really, really fun ways to like, tell these weird meta stories and stuff but right now it's mostly just anime girls and that might just be all it ends up being and they might not do anything more entertaining with it yeah but uh i really like her uh just because like again it's this is the oasis being used for the good of humanity but i have one really bad example of it being used for evil enter mm. enter foxy joel this guy how if there was a guy, Teddy, you know a snake oil says? <laughs> if there was a guy who you would just call like a bad guy, would be Foxy Joel. He walks up in here with his fucking like fucking uh anime like porcelain doll looking ass maid girl, and doesn't even do a voice change. He doesn't do it. He just walks in as a dude. He's like, all right, guys, let's play some fucking video games. And just his his character. God damn. His character is that 
uh, he died and was put into the body of like a fucking doll or whatever. So he is doing a story like you suggest, but it it feels so. Uh, this it pisses me off. Where I go from like watching Iron Man, <laughs> I, I'm on Twitter. I think Iron Man's like I read her whole story. I'm like. Wow, that's actually kind of touching. I'm actually happy people are helping her out. Like, I can feel bad for a girl who goes on to Twitch and, and doesn't ask for money, but asks for fucking plasma because she needs fucking, like, transfusions to live. Next tweet. I have Foxy Joel walks in here retweeting porn of his own character he acts as. <laughs> I don't know, Alex. He sounds kind of besad. Like, he takes his donation money and commissions porn of himself. What do I say to this? I mean, he's he's aware, you know. Everyone who's watching she was aware they're playing with it. That's fun. I know, that's, it's just that's so not that weird. Bad. I think it's worse to have these fucking these corporate fake fucking networks. I hate those way more than I do this fu- than this fucking dude just making fun of these VTubers by doing this. Like that's way better. It just feels so worse going from like the touching story to the guy who commissions porn of himself. The, there are two Wishing. sides of VTubers. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. VTubers suck. Uh, yeah, VTubers are terrible. Ted, they're awful. They're stinky. I've, 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 they got I've, tubes I've, in their nose. I, hey, don't make fun. She's, li- she's dying. You get, <laughs> Ted, you can make fun of a fucking dying person. You gonna do this live on stage? Are you gonna mock someone with an immune deficiency? <laughs> Are you gonna? <laughs> I'll be just Alex. Listen, I can mock people who are disabled, just like our president. Okay, listen. Did you, did you forget he did that? He fucking no. did that like early on, where there was a reporter who had like uh, something was wrong with like his arms, and he was like making fun of him, and people just kind of glossed over that and ignored it. God, this just sucks. Anyway. anyway, Ted, just tell me. Just hit me with it. Defend Origami King to me. Uh, Origami King is the best Paper Mario game I've ever played. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Having beaten it, it is better than the Thousand Year Door. Now, Ted, you going to... Can I say that again into the microphone? <laughs> In front of a live uh, studio no audience. Questions. I am taking no questions. <laughs> so, Alex, uh, that was a fun note. <laughs> <laughs> say, say your two notes. Come on. I want to hear your, your, your... I want to hear why you liked it so much. All right. So, there was Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, took the Paper Mario formula, added a bunch of stuff, made it fancy schmancy. That Super Paper Mario was like a, a, it was meant to be a different game. They slapped Mario onto it. It was pretty, it was, it was fun. I, now that I've had enough time, originally I wasn't like a big fan of Super Paper Mario, right? It, it was shocking. It was jarring. But now taking it just as it is, I really liked Super Paper Mario because it had a fun, quirky story. It was like a 2D platformer. Uh, it's, it's fine, whatever, you know. It was a really long game when you look back at it. There's seven full-ass worlds. It was a fucking big game. Then Sticker Star came out, and I felt like I got throat chopped. <laughs> so Color Splash and Sticker Star were not very good games. That's pretty widely known. Color Splash was acceptable. Color Splash or Sticker Star was just objectively shit, and it has the worst bosses out of any video game I've ever played in my fucking life. So, you said Sticker Star is the worst bosses, right? Yeah. Now, not Color Splash. I thought those bosses sucked too. Color Splash is the the bosses were very similar. Sticker Star, the bosses were you have a single item that you use to immediately trivialize and finish this fight. It is not a boss, it is a single puzzle that you solve, and then the boss instantly dies. And the final boss, Bowser, was atrocious. Because what you would do is that he would show up, so Bowser and Sticker Star, they removed something that was really fun about Bowser. Paper Bowser is a really fun villain. He's a lovable goof. He's a bad guy, but like it, this, the Paper Mario games are where and Mario Luigi ones are where Bowser got his personality from. Where he's like this kind of, I don't know how to describe Bowser. How would you describe him? Well, Bowser's personality. It was funny if I was actually writing a little thing about this to somebody back when they were talking about like how to write like a villain. Bowser, for a long time, and I have to be a nerd for for a couple minutes, for a long time, Bowser was just kind of like a big brute. He was just kind of just a bad guy, you know? It was when you actually get to Mario Party, because Mario Party was kind of like a way goofier thing, Bowser got a lot more, like, endearing traits. Namely, he has this tiny bit of a heart 
but he doesn't want anyone to know it. Example, if you go to the Bowser space and you have no coins, and he's like, like I'm going to steal your coins. Wait, you don't have any? All right, look, kid, here. He gives you 50 coins, and he's like, don't tell anybody about that. I got an image to keep. And he leaves. He does Same shit with like stars, I think, too. Yeah, he, he does shit like that to you. Or uh, Mario Sunshine is where it got really hammered in, and that's where it became, like, canon, where Bowser is now, like... Kind of a goofball. He's a big. He's a single dad. He, yeah, he's a, he's kind of a dope. Like Bowser, he's big. He's brutish. He's he's evil. He's still a bad guy, but he has this one little bit that does kind of make him still kind of endearing. He loves his son. You know, he's generally just he's a dad. Or like how uh, in Mario Odyssey they keep it going. Like look at Bowser as he's trying to marry Princess Peach. You know, when he takes his fucking uh, hat off and throws it at you, he he fucking styled his fucking hair and it looks like his fucking mom did it for him. Like, he's a big... <laughs> he's, he's a dope. Or, like, when, when Peach tells both of them to fuck off, and he just sits there, just, like, just all depressed and sad. He's not even he's not even angry. He's just sad that he lost. Like, he, he has these little bits of where he is, like, just kind of an enduring little idiot, you know? He's a goofball, kind of. You know what I mean? I've he, heard he's... someone describe it as... Uh... Mario is Popeye and Bowser is Bluto. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. So anyway, Sticker Star goes, nah, fuck that. And so Bowser <laughs> became completely silent. <laughs> hey, this is Future Tad, butting in over past Tad. There was two problems I had with this audio. One, I talked for 30 minutes without being interrupted at all by Alex, just rambling about fucking Paper Mario. And then two, his audio stopped recording halfway through, so it was kind of a jumbled mess. I'll save you 30 minutes and just say that Origami King was good, Bowser was funny, you got temporary partners, it was cool, it was awesome, it, it was, it was, I'm doing the Pog Champ face right now just thinking about it. Uh, ring combat's good, it's fun, it's, it's puzzle, it's an RPG light. You can interact with enemies in funny ways. There we go, I just saved you, uh, I saved you 30 minutes of a bunch of delayed, disgusting, ripped up audio. Well, that's good. Well, anything else to talk about before we wrap this whole up? This two-hour-long fucking fiasco of an episode up. Uh, no, other than I expected you to ask more questions, Alex, during the Origami King. Well, but well, you're not a you're not a Chad Paper Mario gamer. Well, like me. also to be fair, I don't give a sh I haven't played a Paper Mario game since Super Paper Fucking Mario. Like, I thought you were I, a true blue Paper Mario I, fan, Alex. Uh, I, t I'm, I'm, I am picturing random fucking symbols and shit in my head to figure like the ocean, the, the ocean. I figured you were just underwater. I don't know what you're talking about, Ted. <laughs> this is, I don't. What am I supposed to see? I don't. I haven't played this game. What's happening? Oh, I described to you, Alex. You have to play rock paper scissors with the Hanaconda, and then you got the hole punch zombie toads that keep trying to grab at you because they don't have their fucking face. But I mean, it's like, I. I don't know what else to ask other than what was your favorite thing and uh, how much it sucked. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you went on for like 20 minutes. That was pretty good. But uh, I've talked about my whole bit. Uh, that's pretty much... Uh, I probably shouldn't have gone on for 20 minutes. I should have only gone on for five. It's the last Noise Boys of 2020. We can make this fucking long. Send this terrible year off with a terrible conclusion. I'm pretty sure that'll be the last podcast episode of the year here. Unless something fucking wacky happens. I don't imagine we're going to put another one out here. Bitch, when something wacky happens, we'll take fucking four days to feel like recording about it. <laughs> uh, you can find the show here on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play. Um, there's a uh, uh, Discord in the description, Patreon in the description. You can find uh, the Jacked Cyberpunk RPG podcast at jackedpodcast.com. Uh, that'll take you to their uh, their YouTube page where they're hosting it, and then it should be on other podcast hosts uh, soon enough. Uh, they've got two episodes out, and it's very good. It is um, more like a radio play where they've got all the funky sound effects and high production qualities, and it's cool. It's got uh, Cyber Garfield's. Garfield Eats is the only restaurant. Remember that bit in uh, Demolition Man where Taco Bell won the fast food wars? Yeah. It was Garfield Eats. It's a good show. You should listen to it, Alex. I know how much you listen, how much you enjoy listening to podcasts, especially <laughs> ones that I put a lot of time and effort into. <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to this monster episode. I hope you have a good 2021. It's uh, it can only go up. Tad says as the coronavirus mutates into the COVID 20. You know, we go to 2021. And it just says 2020 part two. Alex, no, I forgot to do the Noise Boys joke. I fucking wrote down originally the first joke. This is Noise Boys 2019, year in review, part two. This time, it's 2020.